Good Thursday morning, and thanks for joining us from the Ohio Agnet, voice you know with the News You Trust Studio, sponsored by Grain Equipment Company, where innovation meets execution. I'm Dusty Sonnenberg. We'll clear skies in 57 degrees on the barn thermometer, a light breeze out there, but it is going to warm up, pushing 90 degrees, the local weather forecast says. It means it's going to be another hot and dry September day. A couple quick calendar reminders, powered by Soy Biodiesel, tune in at midday today as Dale will be broadcasting from the Wyandotte County fair thanks to nature's premium liquid fertilizers on friday we'll have more updates from the wyandotte county fair as i will be visiting with the folks from ag credit now on monday tune in as we'll be starting our broadcast from the farm science review monday is the day before but we'll be visiting with the folks from ag credit you can stop out and see them at the review their booth at 535 the corner of land avenue and tractor street on tuesday then our broadcast will feature homan their tent located at 611 swine avenue on the farm science review grounds be sure to stop out and say hello it's time now for our weekly update from the ohio soybean council I'm visiting today with Chad Warner. He's a farmer in Dark County, also a member of the Ohio Soybean Board. Chad, you've been doing quite a bit of traveling, and uh, most recently to South Korea with Soy Day. Tell us a little bit about Soy Day and what you did out there, and and you said, too, maybe a sustainability conference along with that. Yeah, the first day we had a um, a sustainability conference with uh, myself and the vice chair of the USB and and three Indiana farmers, Um, and in that uh, conference we we talked about the sustainability of USOE and um, how the different customers around the world are using the so sustainable soy logo on their packaging what kind of demand does there seem to be on the sustainability component from uh, other parts of the world is it something their consumers are really looking for is it the is it the companies that are buying US beans yeah it's the I think it's it's both and the companies that are uh, that, that's a way to, for the companies to differentiate themselves from other food suppliers by putting the logo on there and knowing that it's coming from you know, more sustainable practices. And when they talk sustainability, primarily environmental type sustainability practices? Yes, that and, you know, practices that, that the U.S. farmers are using like uh, cover crops, um, variable rate seeding, variable rate fertilizer application. Uh, GPS technology, um, and most most of the common practices that U.S. farmers are using. Again, my guest today is Chad Warner. He's a farmer in Dark County, also a member of the Ohio Soybean Council. Chad, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. And today's update brought to you by the Ohio Soybean Council and your soybean checkoff. Let's take a look now at that Thursday morning weather forecast brought to us by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. Dry weather continues to dominate here in Ohio. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin. Let's take a look at that forecast update. Overall in Ohio, we're looking at a dry Thursday. The remains of Francine are moving up the Mississippi River Valley and will actually bring some moisture to southern Indiana. But I'm remaining steadfast in my thought that there is not any moisture that can work its way into southwestern Ohio. I just don't see it coming together right now. It wants to stay farther to the west. And so that means we're going to be sunny, warm, and dry in most areas for your Friday tomorrow as well. Maybe a few more clouds around, but nothing dramatic. And as we move into the weekend, the weekend is fully dry Saturday, Sunday. Next week, Monday, Tuesday, we see partly to mostly sunny skies here, but I want to draw your attention to the southeast. I think there's another tropical system that's going to make a run at the Carolinas later Monday into Tuesday, and I think it has a lot of speed. It makes it across the Appalachians, and that's where we can see some rain build into Ohio next Wednesday, maybe even as soon as Tuesday night into Wednesday. I'm going to put in anywhere from a quarter to three quarters of an inch of rain with coverage around 80% of the state the way it looks right now. Anytime you're looking at a tropical system, there's plenty of room and opportunity for things to change but I think we've got a shot at rain here that also helps get our moisture set up for later in the week the atmosphere primed for a weather system coming in from the west and northwest I think that's going to be here the 21st into the 22nd with a chance of some solid rain for most of Ohio 
That's a look at your forecast update. I'm meteorologist Ryan Martin. Thanks, Ryan. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more after this. Get ready for the 62nd Annual Farm Science Review, September 17th, 18th, and 19th. It's more than a farm show. Explore over 600 exhibitors across 2.6 million square feet, providing equipment, services, and education for farms of all types and sizes. Tickets can be purchased at participating OSU Extension offices and agribusinesses, as well as online. Visit fsr.osu.edu to buy your Farm Science Review tickets now and plan your show visit. We look forward to seeing you at the 62nd Farm Science Review, September 17th, 18th, and 19th. Hey, Ohio, exciting news coming to you from Ohio's Country Journal. Subscribe or renew your free subscription by September 20th of 2024, and you could win one of four 50-inch televisions. Ohio's Country Journal is free, but subscribers have to renew their subscriptions every three years to continue to receive it. Subscribe or renew to stay updated on all things Ohio, from agricultural insights to rural lifestyle. Don't miss out. Visit our website today at ocj.com renew. Taking a look at your agricultural headlines, USDA's corn and soybean production estimates will include objective yield data from the fields for the first time and will get traders' attention at least for a day. Analysts are expecting modest changes in the numbers, but there's still room for surprises in the 2024 growing season. Now, after a summer of falling corn prices, December corn finally found pockets of support last week, climbing back 22 cents by September 9th from August 26 lows of that 385. Now, rely largely on 14,200 producer surveys back in August, the August WASDE report estimated 15.147 billion bushels of the corn crop. And based on a record yield of 183.1 bushels to the acre, USDA's 90% confidence interval for August estimates pegged the crop somewhere between 14.1 and 16.2 billion bushels, highlighting how loose production estimates this early in the season can be. Now, the expected margin of error for USDA's September estimates narrows a little, but the estimates don't have much practical use until October, the same time prices typically make their harvest lows. Now, Thursday's September estimate primarily gets attention because it includes yield data from the field plots for the first time of the season. The other lingering issue is that we still don't have a good assessment of how many crops were damaged by numerous bouts of severe weather earlier this season. Attention on USDA's harvested corn acres estimates will likely continue into that January report. When looking at soybeans similar to corn, November soybean prices have also been on a downhill slide this summer, encouraged by USDA's August estimate of a record high 4.589 billion bushel soybean crop and that record 53.2 bushel per acre yield. Now, crop conditions have turned drier lately, but the August temperatures were surprisingly mild as a La Nina delayed its long expected arrival. In addition to the possibility of a record U.S. soybean crop in 24, another bearish shadow looming over prices is the possibility of a record soybean crop in Brazil in early 2025. Now, after several months spent in its dry season, Brazil is currently too dry for soybean planning to commence, and producers are watching for the arrival of that wet season. But this year's start may be later than usual. USDA currently estimates Brazil's new soybean crop at 169 million metric tons. That'd be a 6.21 billion bushel, a bigger pile of competition for the U.S., if the weather does eventually cooperate. And in the wheat markets, USDA is not expecting to make any changes to its 1.982 billion bushel estimate of U.S. wheat production this year, as the next production estimate will come from the small grain summary. The current estimate is for the largest U.S. crop in eight years and is based on a national yield of 52.2 bushels per acre. Now, in August, the USDA expected 828 million bushels of U.S. ending wheat stocks in the 24-25 year. That's the most in four years, but so far, Far, the new season wheat export sales are up 31% from a year ago, suggesting a boost in export demand estimates may be in order. In other agricultural news, average retail fertilizer prices for seven of the eight major fertilizers continue to be slightly lower than they were a month ago. For the seventh week in a row, no fertilizers had significant moves. The seven fertilizers that were lower in price compared to where they were last month include DAP with an average price of $739 a ton, MAP at $813 a ton, 
ton. Potash came in at $486 a ton, while urea was $490 a ton, 1034-0 was $638 a ton, UAN-28 was $327 per ton, and UAN-32 came in at $364 a ton. Now, just one fertilizer was slightly more expensive, anhydrous ammonia had an average price of $676 a ton, but that was up just $1 from the month prior. If you break that down to a price per pound nitrogen basis, the average urea price was $0.53 cents a pound, anhydrous was at $0.41 cents a pound unit nitrogen, UAN-28 was $0.58 cents a pound, while UAN-32 was $0.57 cents per pound unit nitrogen. Prices for three fertilizers are higher compared to one year ago. DAP is 1% higher, while 1034-0 is 4% more expensive. MAP is 9% higher than last year. And prices of the remaining five fertilizers are lower, with anhydrous down 2%, potash 6% less expensive, UAN-32 is 7% lower, and UAN-28 is 8% less expensive, while urea is 13% lower compared to a year ago. Stay tuned. We'll be back to take a look at your markets after this. While you're out at the Farm Science Review this year, be sure to stop out and see the Ohio's Country Journal and Ohio Agnet crew at our Red Barn located at the corner of Corn and Market. You can visit with our team, enjoy some freshly popped popcorn, and get some free giveaways and renew your Ohio's Country Journal subscription for a chance to win a giant TV. There will be games for the whole family, and you can watch a live recording of our Ohio Agnet podcast and the midday and afternoon broadcast from the Farm Science Review. We'll be visiting with folks from home and equipment, Morton buildings, and even talking mental health. That's it this year's Farm Science Review. Be sure to stop out and say hello. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov slash sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. It's time now for your Thursday morning Louis Dreyfus Grain Analysis, brought to you by the Ohio Soybean Council and your soybean checkoff. Let's check in with Ryan Martin. Grain markets finished mostly higher on Wednesday as we broadcast live here from the Wyandotte County Fair, Upper Sandusky, Ohio. Day number three of the fair is behind us. Day number four coming at us. The 4-H stuff is winding down, and now it's just regular old fair time. So we look forward to seeing you here if you swing on by. As we talk about the markets from yesterday, very little activity. I think it was the last day of position squaring ahead of the supply and demand report that comes out today. I'm watching this report very, very closely because, really, uh, the key to this day in this report comes down to what yield is in this report for both corn and soybeans. To start the week, a lot of outlets were talking about higher corn and soybean yield numbers. I can't see that happening given just what's going on with the dryness in the eastern corn belt, but we'll see. You know, if they do, if they do print a bigger number, look out. We're going to have bombs away to the bottom side. Let's talk about some other things in the market. Yesterday, U.S. ethanol production started off the year at a record 318 million gallons, up 4% year on year, 4 million gallons more than last week. The ethanol grind will set record highs with margins very, very profitable. When you have crude oil doing what it's doing, gasoline doing what it's doing, and corn prices dropping like they have, it creates a great margin environment. All ethanol production should go at full tilt here moving forward. USDA and the FSA or FAS did not announce new daily sales yesterday. China has slowed its purchase pace of U.S. beans this week. That's a little bit of a concern to some folks out there, but I think they still have plenty of opportunity. Look, what has the price done here as of late? It's gone up. What does China buy? Cheap beans. The beans aren't as cheap as they were a few weeks ago. you got to let that market do its thing. Also, Brazil is not in the market just yet. They are going to be moving their tractors into the field here in the next few weeks on early bean plantings. EU wheat exports are in decline due to poor quality, so that gives us a little bit of hope here out of the U.S., I'm Ryan Martin. Thanks, Ryan. Let's take a look now back at how the markets closed yesterday, brought to us by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. December corn ended the day up one half cent per bushel at 405 and three quarters, and March corn was up a quarter penny at 424 and a half. 
November soybeans closed up three and a quarter cents at ten dollars one and one half cent, while January soybeans were up three and three quarters at ten nineteen. December Kansas City wheat closed up four and a quarter cents at five dollars eighty eight and one quarter cent, while December Chicago wheat was up five cents at five seventy nine and a quarter, and December Minneapolis wheat closed up seven and a half cents at six eighteen and a half. Now taking a look at your overnight trade, December corn is trending up three quarters of a penny at four dollars five and one half cent, and March corn is up three quarters of a penny at four twenty four and a quarter. November soybeans are up two and a half cents at ten dollars and three cents, with January beans trading up two and three quarters at ten twenty one and three quarter cent. Wheat for December is trading down a half a penny at five seventy eight and three quarters, with the July twenty five new crop down a penny and a half at six dollars twelve and three quarter cent. At the close, October live cattle were up sixty two and a half cents at one seventy six ninety five, and October. Berlin hogs were up $1.20 at $79.75. Feeder cattle for October were up $2.10 at $237.50. Thanks for joining us. You're listening to the Ohio Agnet.